For nearly 100 years, Southend-on-Sea has been the traditional holiday resort and mecca for day trippers for the people of London and its suburbs. An easy, quick and cheap train journey from London brought happy throngs of families from the smoke and grime of their dismal urban homes. The sun always seemed to shine brightly at South End. The fresh, clean sea breezes, the golden sands, cockles, welts, jelly deals, and of course the warm, inviting sea gave great delight and a welcome relief from the hard lives lived by working people in the early years of this century. In recent years, conditions have changed. No longer do railways run special cheap day excursion trains to the seaside. People now have cars, go abroad for their holidays, and generally have a much better standard of living. Nevertheless, a day out to South End still has many attractions for large numbers of people. Clubs for old people, retirement homes, children's charities, and countless other organisations still run coaches in their thousands to South End during the summer. And let us not forget the drinking coach parties who come to South End to see the lights as an excuse for a jolly good booze up at the end of the season. With its many attractions, families can still have a lot of fun at this modern seaside resort. And of course, there is always the pier to visit. At a mile and a quarter long, it's the longest pier in the world, and still South End's best known feature. South End's second famous landmark was named after a German word, meaning a building for the use of visitors to a health resort. I suppose in a way it could have been appropriate. The Cursor was constructed in 1912 and provided an extensive amusement park, boasting of all the latest rides and sideshows for the complete amusement for both young and old. There was also a prestigious building housing the ballroom, bars and at one time a cinema. This was the only permanent feature of the Kersal. Rides came and went as times changed and entertainment became more sophisticated. In 1974 the amusement park was closed and the land sold off as a housing site. But the Kersal remained and its bars and ballrooms put into use as Britain's first legal casino. Later, the Cursor was acquired by the Brent Walker Group, whose growing empire considered South End as a profitable investment area. In 1988, the casino was closed, and its car park sold off as no longer required. The land was purchased by a property developer, and homes were built on the site. What some of the old East Ender day trippers would have called them, I just can't imagine. For the old Kersal building, Walker had ambitious plans. It was to be demolished and a leisure pool and supporting sports facilities were to be constructed on the site. Work actually started. The building was stripped out internally and demolition began. Piles were driven for foundations for the new development. But with mounting financial problems, Brent Walker was forced to stop any further work. And so in this sorry state, the Kersal now remains. It is hard to imagine as we look around at all of this destruction, the glamour and glitter of this once magnificent ballroom, where to the music of famous big bands, thousands of romances were started with Who's Taking You Home Tonight? Within these walls was enjoyed the music of Joe Loss, Ted Heath, Billy Cotton and many other guest bands. For many years, Howard Baker and his talented musicians were the resident dance orchestra when the waltz, quickstep, foxtrot and later the jive enthralled starry-eyed teenagers on Wednesday and Saturday evenings. On Monday evenings, the tempo changed as the Baker Orchestra provided music from a different era for the grace and elegance of the old-time dancers. The people of South End have now realised that the Kersal is an important part of their town's heritage. A group of dedicated preservationists has been formed to bring pressure to bear on the authorities to acquire, restore and preserve this little piece of old South End. It's not too late. The entrance block mostly exists in relatively good condition and it would not be too difficult to restore. For the ballrooms the situation is different large sums of money would be required to return them to their former splendour 
and in the present time of recession would be very hard to justify. As we look around at this, the interior of the entrance hall, we can well imagine the glamour, excitement, laughter and anticipation of fun. Young men and women dressed in their best, no jeans in those days. Romance and heartbreak, jealousy and love, all looked down upon by these peeling walls. The wartime years, 1418, 3945, bringing joy and sadness and pleasurable relief until finally closed by war. And later, in casino years, money lost and money won as the curse of gambling caught many in its clutches. Finally, to decay and neglect, but by fate saved from total destruction. For the final outcome, we must wait. I hope that it does survive and that the Cursal Dome will remain as a constant reminder of Southend's very happy past. Mm -hmm.